My name is Tom Pinkney. This is the video abstract for the Rossini trial. Rossini was a multi-center observer-blinded randomized control trial exploring the efficacy of wound edge protection devices in reducing surgical site infection after laparotomy. So the intervention of interest is a wound edge protection device, also called a wound guard. Uh, the, there are many on the market uh, made by different manufacturers, but they share the same basic design. They're a sterile device with a semi-rigid plastic ring which is inserted into the abdominal cavity onto which is attached an impervious sheet which is unfolded and the operation takes through the hole in the middle. So despite these devices being available for around 40 years and multiple small trials demonstrating some degree of clinical benefit from their use, they're not yet commonly used. So we designed a deliberately pragmatic and simple trial to explore their clinical efficacy in reducing wound infection. So in our trial, any patient undergoing a laparotomy was eligible to enter. That could be via any incision for any indication, both emergency and elective operations. The only main exclusion was those undergoing a laparoscopic operation. We randomised patients one-to-one -one while they were going off to sleep in the anaesthetic room to either receive the wound edge protection device or to have a standard operation without the device. The patient's wounds were reviewed by a trained clinician before they went home at day five to seven and again at 30 to 33 days and that clinician was unaware of the arm allocation. We covered the intervening period by a self-reported questionnaire filled in by the patient at that second visit. Robust data on quality of life and resource usage was also collected throughout the trial. The trial was funded by the Research for Patient Benefit Programme of the National Institute for Health Research. After a five-month pilot phase, we recruited to the trial ahead of schedule. Um, 21 centres recruited in total to the trial. This was in part, I think, due to the fact that the surgical registrars were leading the recruitment, leading the randomisation of the study, and this meant that we recruited particularly well. In total, 184 patients experienced a surgical site infection within 30 days of their surgery. 91 of these were the 369 patients randomised to receive a wound edge protection device, and 93 of these were of the 366 randomised to the control arm. This meant that 25% of patients in both treatment groups experienced a surgical site infection within 30 days of their surgery. Perhaps unsurprisingly, because we observed no significant difference in the primary outcome, there was also no difference in the duration of hospitalisation and of um, health status, so patient quality of life. Our study robustly demonstrated these devices don't appear to work in this application. When reviewing this study and this result, there may be three questions that come to mind. The first is, have we really identified surgical site infections? So we looked at those 184 patients who developed an SSI across both groups, and together they had a significantly longer initial length of stay, used significantly more resources in primary care, and had a lower health rate of quality of life reported. The second point to note is the apparently high wound infection rate in the control arm, around 25%. That's only higher than the accepted figures most surgeons would expect. Uh, but I would point out that other studies over the past few years that have used a similarly intensive follow-up schedule bringing the patients back for an in-person review have found surprisingly similar rates of around 25%. So the third question is why the results of Rossini were different from those already published in the literature. And there are around 12 randomised control trials looking at these devices. They're almost all single centre apart from two and most have significant risk of bias within them. Uh, systematically reviewing these papers or putting them together does appear to show some benefit, but this excellent editorial from Philip Barry about one of the reviews points out the dangers of pulling together poor quality small studies. You may reach the wrong conclusion. So the, the West Midlands Research Collaborative and the other collaboratives, the, our main goal is to try and deliver high quality, prospective, um, multi-centre trials. So the trainees regularly meet, uh, we think of an important research question, then carry out a systematic review to design the trial. This includes consenting patients, randomising patients, as well as following up patients. We also get involved in overseeing the trial management group, undertaking data analysis and writing up the results. These activities give an unparalleled insight into the world of clinical research and necessitate close interaction with the established academic infrastructure. I hope this publication will be a beginning of a new era in clinical surgical research. So in conclusion from our trial, uh, these wound edge protection devices don't appear to work in reducing surgical site infections, so they can't be recommended in this role. Secondly, trainees can deliver these trials through their research collaboratives. And finally, we need large-scale, rigorous and appropriately powered randomised controlled trials to assess surgical interventions or devices before their true efficacy can be determined.